Hi everybody, welcome to yet another episode of HSP TV. Today I want to talk to you about the dark side of empathy. And in the middle, I will get into what I mean with that and I'll explain further. If you're tuning in to this broadcast, I would love it if you would just wave at me or call out your name. I would give you a shout out in the interview. Hi Robert, nice of you to join. Um, just like this. <laughs> and if you have any questions, uh, either uh, on this topic or on another one, you can just ask them and I will do my utmost best to answer them. So, empathy. Empathy opens the door to a variety of energy and a lot of that energy could be classified as negative. And when I say negative, I mean it in a sense that an empathy Path often notices or even attracts the suffering of others. Hi Emma, nice of you to join. I don't know if you've ever noticed this, but I notice it a lot for myself and I hear it a lot in my practice as well. We tend to draw people to us that start talking about their problems or what they think is wrong in the world or uh, complains about their current situation. And we want to help. We want to offer support and compassion. But if those people had been happy, we didn't have to. So that's the, the dark side of empathy. Is There are times when, when sometimes I can get frustrated and that depends entirely on my mood because sometimes it feels like there's nothing but complaints in the world. Everybody has, has complaints, everybody is so negative and when I'm not feeling that well, sometimes it can, it can be really frustrating. But most of the time I am happy that people come up to me and feel that they can trust me enough to share their deepest needs, their deepest frustrations or their deepest fears. And I always try, hi Linda, nice of you to join. I always try to be there because I think that most of the time they just need a shoulder or to cry on or, or just a, an ear that listens to them. And I'd like to be that for those people. And I think that's an innate trait of the highly sensitive person. We always want to help other people. And that makes it so that we, we listen to them and we try to give advice. And uh, sometimes no advice can be given because sometimes what they're telling you is just shit. And, but then you can still offer them that shoulder or, or that ear that listens to them and that can already be very beneficial for their recovery. But sometimes we can also pick up on other people's energies, other people's vibes when they are not in the room. And when we don't know that this can happen or when we don't, um, we, we, we are not um, aware of this happening, then we can think that it's our feelings, that, that it's happening to us, that we suddenly are scared or, or sad or angry. And so it's, it's really important to distinguish between what is yours and what is somebody else's. You have to Make sure that when you identify with the emotion, identify with the pain, with the, the sadness. Hi, Andre. Hi, Jesse. Nice of you to join. You have to make sure that it's your sadness or your anger or your frustration and not somebody else's. Because when you wallow in something negative, you can start to think that you're a bad person or that you're doomed, that you can never achieve happiness or never be truly thankful for your life. But if you base that on feelings that are not yours, then you have a negative image of yourself that doesn't reflect who you really are. So one of the first things you need to do when you start feeling some kind of emotion is to ask yourself the very important question, is this mine or is this somebody else's because if it's somebody else's then you have a choice you don't have to do something with it if it's somebody else's you can just let it go and only when it's yours you need to do something with it and the most important distinction that i've learned in in this question in determining if it's mine or somebody else's is 
knowing what it st stems from, what's what's the the where does it originate from? So you can ask yourself, do I know why I am happy right now, or sad right now, or angry right now? And if it's yours, if it's your emotion, you should be able to pinpoint the origin of that emotion. You should be able to answer, why am I feeling this? Why am I angry? Why am I sad? Usually it's something that happens or something that somebody said. And, and then you know, you know what's the cause of your feelings. But the moment that you don't know, the moment that you cannot answer the question, where is this emotion coming from? Then that usually means it's not your emotion it's somebody else's and then you can let go but what I've learned is when it's my emotions I usually try to breathe through them and I acknowledge them because emotions are there to be felt emotions want to be seen emotions want to be acknowledged and we are a star in suppressing our emotions in pretending that they're not there pretending that they might go away if i don't look at them but that's not what emotions are about emotions are energy in motion which is a saying that i really love emotion is energy in motion and it means that you want that it, it, it needs attention energy needs attention emotion needs attention so you need to find out what the emotion is about and then deal with it you might relate to do the following story we all know somebody that is on the depressive side they always whine they always complain they have a shitload of problems and they love to come and talk to you about them and sometimes i can handle it sometimes i'm in a good energy and then i have the patience to to talk with them and uh, especially in my work of course i can always handle it but in my private life it's it's sometimes it's also too much sometimes they drain you they take away your energy and then after talking with them for half an hour an hour or maybe even longer when the conversation is over and when they leave you feel exhausted you feel drained you feel like they 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 stole all your energy and that's basically what they did i call them energy vampires and it's very important for us HSPs to learn how to handle that to learn how we can protect our energy to make sure that other people don't steal our energy and it's also very important that we learn how to not take over negative energies or negative emotions from somebody else and these are things that have my focus whenever I am helping other people professionally, either in a coaching or in my online program. These subjects get a fair amount of attention because these are the things that we generally describe as being the negative sides of being a highly sensitive person. But it doesn't need to be a negative side. You can learn how to be there for someone, be their shoulder, listen to them and not feel drained at the end. To not take over their energy and their emotions, but to leave them with them. And it's very important for us to learn how to do that because this means that we can be the boss of our own energy and of our own emotions. And what you generally see is, is when you're talking with people and, and they are confiding in you about their, their issues and their problems and their things that you could be just supportive. You can stay in your own energy bubble and not be affected by their energy, but you can still be sympathetic. You can still listen, you can still support, you can still offer advice or maybe just kind words or a hug or whatever it is that that person needs. But they won't steal your energy and they won't make you feel bad or drained after. And this is very very important so if you haven't learned how to do that yet or if you want to know more about this then please contact me i offer a free coaching session to everybody that's watching these videos and you can book it through www2 the number two beinbalance.com slash yes and we can talk about among other 
these things, how to protect your energy, how to make sure that you remain in balance, that you don't take over other people's negativities and negative energies and how to let them go the moment that you do feel that you've taken them over. Because empathy, it's far from a curse. No one has made a difference and had it easy. Because if that were the case, then kindness and compassion and understanding wouldn't be necessary. Support and community would be non-existent. Without empathy, we would not feel. We wouldn't discover what is real and change things into what they need to be. And we wouldn't be capable of becoming the unspoken whispers of our hearts. So empathy is one of our major strengths, but we make, need to make sure that it doesn't become our downfall. And this means that we really need to learn techniques and ways to protect ourselves, to protect our energies, and to not take over all the things that are negative, and to be able to let them go in case we accidentally did take over negative things. I hope you enjoyed watching this episode. If you have any other topics that you would like me to talk about, if you have any other questions that you would like me to do an episode about, please email them to me at info at tobeinbalance.com. The links are all below this video. And um, I will answer them in next week's episode. So again, thank you for your time. Thank you for being here. And I hope to see you again next week, next Thursday, 5.30 Amsterdam time, my personal FB page on FB Live. Bye.